Hip-Hops is 1987.com. Welcome to Atlanta for a great day in Hawks history as we introduce our new general manager. My name is Bob Rath, I'm the television voice of the Hawks on Fox Sports Southeast, and we'd like to welcome all of you here in attendance at Phillips Arena this morning, and also those of you who are watching us in a variety of ways. We are streaming live on Hawks.com, we are on Facebook Live, we're also on the air on Fox Sports Southeast, and on the Fox Sports Go app, so we welcome one and all to the introduction of Travis Schlein. Uh, we would like to, before we get going, point out that uh, Coach Budenholzer would love to be here, but he is attending the high school graduation of his son. But I am assured that Coach Bud is watching on Hawks.com today and uh, sends them all, obviously, his best to want to be here as well. And that is something great. Yes, and we think he's, he's on track, so that's good. Uh, we would like to uh, welcome all of you. Our owners are in attendance uh, as well. Uh, they're here today for this, uh, this great day, a very significant day uh, for the Hawks. We would like to begin with remarks from our principal owner, Tony Russell. Tony. Thank you. And good morning. Today, we're here to formally introduce Travis Schlank as our general manager and head of basketball operations to the Atlanta community. Travis is a critically important part of what we're working very hard to accomplish here in Atlanta, to bring and create, to bring a championship and create a championship caliber franchise. Travis is a high character person and an experienced leader. I'd like to highlight three of his background, three areas of his background, which are and were, if you will, of particular interest to us when we were doing our search. First, Travis held key leadership positions at Golden State. He was intimately involved in several key acquisitions and trades that helped form the team to what it is today. And as you can see from today, and from today's Golden State Warriors, he truly comes with a championship pedigree. Second, Travis started at the very bottom of a basketball franchise. He was a video coordinator at the Miami Heat before moving to a video scout, then an assistant coach, and ultimately as director of player personnel for the Warriors. He has deep, full range experience in basketball operations understands what a quality franchise has to be. Third, and maybe most importantly, we're convinced that Travis is an extraordinary collaborator. He leverages and will leverage our great basketball operations and great coaching staff. No one person can do it alone, and we want a team that works hard, both on and off the court. Right now, as a reputation, many people come to play for the Hawks and know that they will get better playing for Coach Bud. Soon, they will come to play for a championship. As I've mentioned previously, our ownership group is committed to providing the resources required to achieve these goals. During the interview process, Travis mentioned how he appreciated what this franchise has done in just two short years to become more player friendly. A new practice facility in partnership with Emory has state-of-the-art medical staff and equipment as well as rehab facilities and will help this process a great deal. Our D-League franchise starting this year before moving to a new facility in College Park will help as well. So please understand, we're trying to do everything we can to move the Atlanta Hawks to that next level. Travis Schlein is an incredibly important part of that process. With that, I'd like to introduce you to our new general manager. We're excited to have him. 
I think you guys will be soon as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, the success that we had in Golden State started with great ownership. Going through this process, the interview process, getting to know Tony, uh, spending time with Jamie, the minority owners, Grant, Stephen, and Rick, I felt the passion they have for this franchise, not only the franchise, but the community of Atlanta. Uh, as Tony just mentioned, the resources they're putting in with the new practice facility, the D-League team, uh, the renovation they're going to be doing to the arena here, and then also for the community, the redevelopment they're going to be planning downtown. You can sense where they want to take this organization, and that was a really big part of me wanting to come here and be a part of that. So Tony, thank you for allowing me to be a part of that. First off, uh, I need to thank my wife. Uh, my wife is the backbone of our family. I've got three young kids, and without her keeping it together at home, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Uh, she's, she's been there from day one with me, so I really need to, need to make sure that I thank her. So we got that out of the way. <laughs> you can never go wrong with that. Right? <laughs> yeah, she, As I learned many times. <laughs> no, she couldn't be here today. My kids are still in school back in California, but uh, I know they're watching, so I just want to let them know that without them, I wouldn't be here. Then I've been unbelievably fortunate in the past to work with some of the best people in the NBA, starting as an intern with the Orlando Magic uh, when Chuck Daly, John Gabriel were the head coach and general manager, and being able to learn from those guys was a great stepping stone. Then, as Tony mentioned, I worked in Miami. Pat Riley was the patriarch of that franchise, obviously. But the other coaches that were there, Stan Van Gundy, Jeff Pizdelli, Mark Arbroni, and obviously Eric Spolstra, all those guys have gone on to be head coaches in the NBA and to be able to spend time with them and learn from, from them was very important to my upbringing in the NBA. And then obviously in Golden State, we had Don Nelson, Chris Mullen, and then the current group we have now, Joe Lakeman, and Peter Gruber, Bob Myers, uh, Larry Riley in the beginning, and then obviously Jerry West, as you guys know, he's someone that uh, I've come to grow very close to, and obviously his legacy speaks for itself. Now it's time to get to work. You know, we're here day one, we've got the draft coming up in a little under three weeks. We got free agency, free agency falling right after that. Now it's time to get with Coach Bud and his staff, the basketball operations staff we have here in place, and we're gonna start working and putting together a plan for the future. Uh, it's the same for every team this time of year. We we have we have the draft every year, we have free agency every year, so this is gonna be the process moving forward, but being new here, it's time to bunker down with these guys for the next three weeks and get to work so we can make these decisions. What I can tell you today is the philosophy we're going to have moving forward. As Tony mentioned earlier, we're, we're going to be player friendly. Uh, I feel like we've got a great base for that. We're going to continue that. We're going to not only make this a place where players want to come, but their family still a part of the community as well. And that's going to be a big part of what the Hawks basketball organization is going to be moving forward. We're going to be extremely communicative from the top down, from ownership all the way to the bottom of basketball operations. Everyone's going to know what our goal is. You're going to know how they fit into that goal, and we're all going to be pulling on the rope in the same direction, so to speak. As Tony mentioned, I'm a very inclusive person, so everybody's going to be involved. Uh, I accept ideas from everyone. I'm not someone that's going to sit in a room by themselves and think they have all the answers. We're going to be inclusive. We're going to work together, and we're going to come to the best decisions that we can make. Finally, we want to build a championship quality team that's sustainable. We want to be in the conversation every year of a franchise that can compete for a championship. So that's going to be our end game. With that, um, we'll open up for your questions. And if you would please uh, identify yourself and your video affiliation so those that are watching can hear as well. A little more from that general constitution. Tony, I'd like to start with you. I just wondered how much more you can expand on the search process. How many candidates did you talk to? Um, what were their backgrounds? And then what was it uh, that stood out to Travis? When did you make that decision? And how much did Jerry West look at? That's a mouthful, I realize. Sure. Um, 
Well, under the category of what's the right thing, how much I should say about the process, uh, Grant Hill, Rick Schnall, uh, Stephen Price all were part of the search committee, all the owners of the Hawks that we uh, have been enormously valuable in that process. I, I don't know exactly how many folks we met, but uh, eight or ten I think would be a fair summary. Um, we met a whole lot of talented people, uh, some really, really strong candidates. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the breadth of the experience that Travis had, uh, as I said, uh, having every job in a, in a basketball operations, uh, understanding what everyone does in basketball operations, having that championship pedigree, uh, having the type of mentors uh, and uh, colleagues that Travis had, he, he separated himself in our discussions uh, both in his technical skills and his understanding of what it takes to build a great franchise. Uh, so uh, I don't want to uh, diminish some of the folks we met. Uh, some had some extraordinary uh, backgrounds, if you will, but uh, we thought at least that Travis did separate himself in a meaningful way. Uh, again, under the category of uh, Jerry West reference or whatnot, uh, Jerry's a great guy and knows a little bit about basketball and uh, I think has an amazingly positive view of Travis, but for the right reasons. And it came across, uh, it actually did have some influence in, in that process because uh, it's hard not to take uh, some of Jerry's advice. I mean, I want to take all of it, but it's uh, hard not to take some of it. So, uh, but for what it's worth, there were a whole lot of other references uh, that we went through, uh, far beyond Jerry. Uh, and it's uh, rather extraordinary how consistent uh, those references were. Brandon Lee from the Fan 68937 FM. Uh, first, your impressions of the team as the players are under contract, uh, as constructed as the players that you have under contract. Two, um, is it important for you to have a timetable for getting the organization to a championship level? Some GMs uh, talk about having timetables and time frames. Are you one of those? Um, first of all, thank you. Um, to answer the second part of your question, uh, it took from when I got to the front office of Golden State to where they where we are right now, or where they are right now, Golden State, seven years. Um, so it's it's not a quick process. You know, it takes time, and the way you get there is by maintaining your flexibility, accumulating assets, and developing your own talent. And as Tony said earlier, we have in Coach Bud and his staff a great group of coaches who've done a great job historically of developing talents, so we're in great shape there. We have 11 draft picks coming up in the future, so we have flexibility and assets there. So we're actually in a better place right now than Golden State was when I started there. Now, that doesn't mean that we can get there, you know, in seven years, but we're, we're, we're in a good place to start building for the future right now. Um, as far as the players on the roster right now, we have, we have obviously we have a good team here. For 10 years in a row, this franchise has been in the playoffs, so we're fortunate. Most of the time when guys take a job at my level, they're getting bad teams. I'm inheriting a good team with a, with a nice foundation uh, that has some flexibility, and that's what we're going to look to maintain. And as we get to a position where a trade or an acquisition comes available for a superstar, we're going to be in a position to do that. I know, uh, I know that some of this is based on personnel, but have you and Coach Bud talked a little bit about the type of style that you want to have for Atlanta Hawks? And if so, what is that? Yeah, no, Coach Bud and I had spent a few days together, you know, just getting to know each other. We were acquaintances, but um, not close friends by any means. But we were off to a great start on that, and we share a lot of the same philosophies. And I think, you know, the ball movement, the sharing the ball, the space in the floor, all of those things are things that we both see eye to eye, and those would be things that we we're going to look at it in the future, for sure. Hi, I'm Travis. Greg Collier, Action Sports and News. I just wanted to ask you, coming into a program like this where they've had 10 years of success, uh, do you think it's more challenging than coming in knowing that there is a, a level of success versus it not being there to the point where it is there, you just want to tweak it to make it go over to the top? Uh, well, obviously, any time that you're in the playoffs, it, it's a good thing. So that's something, obviously, we're going to look to maintain. Uh, but we need to maintain the flexibility so when 
the time comes to strike on a big acquisition, we're ready to do that. And like I said, we're, we're, we feel good about where we're positioned right now. Uh, it's, it's hard to get to a point where you're competing for a championship year after year after year. That's our ultimate goal. But we have to maintain the flexibility and the assets so we're able to do that when the time is approaches. Hey, uh, Mark Bradley from the AJC. Uh, Mr. Ressler described you as a collaborator, but it is true that you're taking a job that, that has, at least part of your title, has been held by a guy you're going to be working with here. Uh, do you foresee any issues meshing with Coach Gould Nelser, or do you think you guys can be sympathetic? Uh, as I mentioned just a second ago, uh, Bud and I were acquaintances. We've probably spent uh, over the last three or four days, you know, four or five hours a day together just getting to know each other. And I, I have no reason to believe that there will be any issues with Coach and I. Um, I have the utmost respect for him as a coach. I think that as an organization, we're extremely fortunate to have him because he's one of the best coaches in the league, in my opinion. I'm here to help him. It's, it's a partnership. We're, we're in this together. I'm not successful in my job if he's not successful in his job. And, and from our conversations, I know he feels the same way. So, so I, I think we're going to have a very strong working relationship. Mr. Vice, one more sporting news. Um, Travis, you've been around a lot of championship organizations, a lot of winning organizations. You've seen what it takes to win. What did you see in Atlanta that showed you that he could be on that same level? And if not, then what does it really take to get to that level? Yeah, I mean, that, that quite simply was getting to know Tony and the rest of the ownership, like I said, Grant, Steve, Rick, those guys, those guys have the passion to, to build a winner. Like, you need to be able to have the resources to build a winning organization. Um, from my time, you talked about the Miami, great ownership there with the Erickson family. Uh, in Golden State, when the new ownership group, Joe Lake and Peter came in, the same passion that I felt from this ownership group and I, I was, quite frankly, in a great situation in Golden State. Um, and it would have taken a very good situation and a very good ownership group like we have in place here uh, to get me to leave. And that, that, that's the simple answer. It really is. Hey, I've been on the job very long, but there's a huge decision this franchise has to make in regard to Paul Millsap. And I wonder what you can tell us about um, how big of a priority is that you see him as a part of your future, what can you tell us about? Because that's the first of many downloads, I would imagine. Yeah, listen, these are decisions that happen every year, first of all. Free agency comes every year. It's not like this is the only year we have free agency. Paul, obviously, is a four-time All-Star. Uh, arguably the best player on this team. Probably is the best player on this team. So that's going to be a priority. But for me right now, I've got to get with Coach Bud and his staff and my front office staff. And over the next three weeks, we've got to hammer out a plan for the future. And certainly, Paul is going to be you know, a priority in that. Um, I just want to say, obviously, I mean, for your own self, you were watching the draft. And me and Scooby watching the college coach. So how do you take that with what the Hawks have to kind of change that information and combine it with the what the current staff has here as far as getting ready for the draft and free agency? Um, well, I think I understand what you're asking. I mean, we're a little different in Golden State. This year we didn't have a pick. Um, so we were more focused on, you know, second round picks because we historically in Golden State, you know, looked to purchase picks. Um, the draft is not an exact science. Like, there's not one foolproof way to be successful. You know, you're going to make mistakes in it. And we've always kind of said in Golden State, if we could be right 60% of the time, we've been successful in the draft. So, to use the analogy, the more swings you get, the more chances you have to get hits. You know, this year we have three picks. You know, in the future we have 11 picks. So if we can be right more than we're wrong in the draft, we're, we're in a great situation to get young talent. And as I mentioned earlier, our coaching staff historically has already proven they can develop that young talent. So that's what I mean when we have a bright future with assets that we can move forward.
you guys kind of uh, drafted Steph Curry and Draymond Green. You guys did the, the best of the draft, not only in the early in the early parts of the round, but also the second round as well. Have you identified a player possibly in the draft this year that could possibly be a franchise player and help get the Hawks off the floor? Uh, you know, for franchise player for where we're picking at 19 and 31 and 60 is obviously hard to do. Uh, but there are certain our players that I've identified in the short time I've spent with our, our front office staff that, that we like. Um, we think that there'll be players, you know, I don't want to use franchise player, but there'll be players there that we think that can help us in the future for sure. Tony, I know you said you uh, that you I know you said that you've interviewed, uh, I think, 8 to 10 people. I don't know how many of those 8 to 10 actually have been a general manager before. Um, you're welcome to tell us now if you... Or no. How many of them have been general have been, manager? How many of those 8 to 10 have been a general manager? Um, I'm not sure of any. I don't know. Okay. I don't have any. Okay, so that would lead my, my next question, which is, which is, obviously, in those situations, a lot of them have very impressive resumes, they come off very impressively, they get good um, endorsements from other people, but there has to be something I would think that would tell you, okay, this person is ready for that job and for that responsibility and to, to manage other people. What, what was it about Travis that sort of jumped out to you about him that said he was ready? Well, I think the two issues we have to deal with, we keep saying we're pretty successful. We've been in the playoffs for 10 straight years. Uh, I don't know if it's 20 or 25 of the other owners in the NBA. I have, uh, maybe not all 30, but 20 or 25 uh, would die for that track record, frankly. Not 29 as we hope, because there's only one other that has been in it longer. But, so the vast majority of owners were so impressed, uh, as many fans I think should be. Uh, we've tried to win every year. Uh, but there's no doubt that over the past two years, what we've seen and what I've said is the goal is how do we make better decisions, how do we have more firepower in the front office uh, with that, uh, if you will, uh, comfort level that we can get to the next level. I, I think, and we felt, that Travis absolutely has that uh, understanding, has seen it firsthand, uh, and I'd say as importantly, and we've now seen this firsthand and uh, have learned it in our reference checks, Travis understands every partner and does the work. Uh, understanding players and recruiting players and understanding what makes a franchise player friendly. All of these are critically important for us. And we met a whole lot of folks that seem to have strengths in one of those areas. Maybe in recruiting, maybe in evaluating player personnel, maybe in understanding an organization, uh, maybe in understanding what a championship is with a championship background. But we didn't find folks any individual that we felt offered all of the above until we ran into Travis and spent more time. So, again, as they say, nothing in life is certain, but we feel incredibly comfortable with Travis's experience across the board with what we're trying to achieve here in Atlanta with the Atlanta Hawks. Brian Lee, Anthony Vance, David 937 FM. Travis, what are your general philosophies on being a tax paying team in case you need to go over the cap and get what you need to do what you would like to do? Well, that's probably a better question for Tony, but I do, I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I've, even at Golden State early, you know, we had Joe who wanted to go out there, wanted to show. I don't think it makes sense for a franchise to go into the tax unless you're competing for a championship. Uh, to go into the tax to try to get, you know, to an eight, seven seed, to me, you know, being fiscally responsible with these gentlemen's money, that, that's not right. But if we're there where, you know, we make a move but it's going to put us in the tax by a few million dollars but it's going to give us a better chance to win a championship, that's when I'll go to bat and I'll be knocking on Tony's door and I'll say, listen, this is something we need to do because it's going to get us to where we want to go. But until we get to that level, um, I can't sit here and say it's a smart business decision to go into the tax. I'd share that view. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question.
question about what, what type of chemistry is required between coach, owner, and general manager to make that formula for success? It, it all starts with communication. Uh, you know, I've been asked this in the past. You have to have a clear line of communication from the coach, from the owner, and from the general manager. And, and really, that's a big part of, of my job, is to maintain that communication, keep those lines open. Um, but when you start to see a breakdown in that communication, that's when you start to think things go off the rails. Um, so it, it's extremely important that everybody's on the same page and you have that communication. Zach Klein from WSB, welcome to Atlanta. Um, what questions or reservations did you have um, the outside looking in that you, when you visited with Tony, did you kind of calm you down or did you hope? Uh, I wouldn't say reservations that I had, but like I stated earlier, when I got to meet Tony uh, and the rest of the group, I felt extremely comfortable with them. And you could tell the passion they had for the city and, and the franchise, obviously. That, that's just, having been with Golden State and Miami, like, it's unbelievably important to have an ownership that's invested um, and cares. And, and that that's something I felt right away from, from all four of the guys that I met with, you know, Grant, Rick, and Steven, um, and then obviously Jamie, who I met with, with Tony, uh, later on in the interview process. There, there's just no doubt the communication process, except for maybe during games, where if Dominique's not speaking on the, on the television, maybe I'll go to Dominique and ask him what he sees, but uh, being able to text with your GM and being able to complain about what you see or be excited about what you see. Uh, but you can't communicate with your coach during the game, so you need someone. Uh, <laughs> but communication is of critical importance. And I think we're going to have that uh, and improve that dramatically. Great, gentlemen, thank you very much. Travis, congratulations, and welcome to you and your family tonight. Thank you. And then we'll break it up into one at once. So, we got a brand new Hawks basketball for you. You've done it all. I mean, assistant coach, video coordinator. Was there a point at which you weren't really sure what you wanted to do in your basketball career? And, and then at what point did you think, you know, I think I want to be a GM? No, um, I always wanted to be on the coaching side. That's the side I started on. Uh, but when I worked for Don Nelson in Golden State, uh, you know, he said, you, you really have a good eye for talent because, you know, in our coaches' meetings, we talk about game planning and prepping. And he goes, you, you should really take a hard look uh, at the front office side. He goes, you know, the other person I told that to was my son, Donnie, uh, the general manager, president of the Dallas Mavericks. And so they started to put me on the road, going to pro play personnel, D-League games. And then Larry Riley the next summer became the general manager, and he asked me to come on the front office side uh, to be director of play personnel. It was a hard decision because, you know, coaching was what I always wanted to do. But quite frankly, there was more stability in the front office than on the coaching side. And yes. my, my oldest daughter had just been bored and I thought, you know what, let's give this a shot. And it's obviously worked out well for me. You think that that eye for talent might just come from because you worked in video so much, basically? Or, I mean, I know coaches look at video too, but. Yeah, I, I, certainly I think that, that that's a part of it. But I, I really believe that it's a knack. I mean, I think some people have it and some people don't. And I certainly don't believe I'm better than anyone else. But I, I think that you can, you just, it's a knack, I think, to people that are really good at it. A lot of people can look at a film and say, okay, he's fast, he can shoot, he can do this. Exactly. Big hands. But what, so from a scouting perspective or a personnel perspective, what jumps out to you about a guy when you watch him? So one of the things, and we probably should have talked about this in the press conference, but one of the real core values that we're going to have and I have when you're looking at talent is character. Uh, so when I go to a game, obviously everyone wants the game, but when a player comes out of the game, how they interact with the coaches, how they interact with the assistant coaches, what kind of posture they have on the bench, you know, 
those kind of things. When we go to practices, watching again how they interact at practices, are they easy to get along with? But these guys, as you guys know from following the team, they spend so much time together. If you have bad character guys or guys that are just tough to be around every day, it just brings everyone down. So that's going to be a big, big thing we look at. You can really tell the difference, can't you, when you watch a team, kind of how together they are? I mean, yeah, for sure. And just little things, like one of the things that I've said and it brought up to guys, like when a guy's shooting free throws, whether the whole team goes and gives the guy five in between free throws. It's just little things like that. You can tell how connected a group of guys are. I know, speak, uh, I don't mean to link that to what you just said, but obviously Dwight Howard, uh, I'm assuming they had a lot of talks about him, how he fits here and how he didn't seem to fit here very well. A guy you've got a lot of money invested in over the next two years. Uh, how much did y'all talk about Dwight and can you make this work when it seemed, he seemed to have trouble fitting into what Bud wants to do. Uh, well, like I said earlier, you know, listen, Dwight's one of the best big guys in the league. Um, you know, as far as rebounding, protecting the rim, he's a big reason why Atlanta was one of the best defenses in the NBA last year. I, I personally have not spoken with Dwight yet. Uh, we've exchanged some text messages, but I certainly plan to sit down. Uh, I don't judge people on what I hear. I, I'll judge people when I have a chance to sit down and talk to them. But he's, like I said, one of the most productive big guys in the league, so he's important to us. Tim Hardaway Jr., um, I want to say he's been working out with the team. Obviously, not currently in the contract. What, what are the plans with him, if you can share? Uh, it's similar to what I said earlier with the Paul thing. Obviously, he had a great year last year here in Atlanta, uh, a bit of a breakout year. He's a restricted free agent, so it gives us a little more leverage in the negotiations for sure. But he's a guy that we value here. And I'm going to sit down with the staff and you know figure out where where that fits in. But you know we're we're Tim fans here for sure. Is, is there anybody on the roster right now, seriously, where you could look on and say? They're not going anywhere. He's going to be here next year, or is everything? Uh, we back you into a corner. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tight corner. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, the easy way to answer that is, you know, we, we like this team. I mean, this team was a playoff team. You know, arguably could have had home court. You know, if they get a couple games here or there, they're home court teams. So, but you know, let's be honest. If Cleveland decides they wants to trade LeBron, we're going to have conversations acquiring that so you know we have to be realistic where we are you know we have Paul who's an all-star you know he probably you know he's our best player so it would take more to acquire Paul from us but there's other guys you just kind of go from there but I don't like the term untouchable but you evaluate each deal as it comes along hiphops is 1987.com